power building, gaining muscle and getting stronger at the same time. In this video, I'll show you how to do just that using science. Welcome back. Soon to be Dr. Milo Wolf here, courtesy of Wolf Coaching. First off, gaining muscle absolutely helps you get stronger in the long term. So these two things, gaining muscle and getting stronger, can absolutely go hand in hand in a power building program. To understand how to best gain muscle and gain strength at the same time, we first need to understand how to do both of these optimally and dependently. First, muscle growth. For exercise selection, we generally want to pick exercises that both lengthen the target muscle and challenge that muscle in that lengthened position. For more information, check out this video here. We want to perform sets of five repetitions all the way to 30 reps and include a variety of rep ranges in the program as this likely leads to more hypertrophy overall than just doing one. We want to rest for long enough between sets to enable good performance. Generally, this will wind up being about two to six minutes. Check out this video here for more information. We probably want to be doing between five and 15 sets per week per muscle group for beginners and closer to 10 to 20 sets per week per muscle group for anyone who's been training for a good while. We'll also want to train pretty close to failure as that can roughly double muscle growth as you can see in this video here. We want to make sure we target all the muscles of your body pretty effectively. A squat, for example, doesn't do a good job of targeting the rectus femoris, as the rectus femoris will shorten at the knee while it lengthens at the hip. So, some isolation exercises and some compound exercises will be included. And in fact, isolation exercises are better suited to lighter rep ranges, say above 10 or 15 reps, and compounds are better suited to heavier rep ranges, say between five and 15 reps. We want to train each muscle group at least twice a week, so body part splits are out the question, but we want to probably train them a bit more often as you do see a slight benefit of training a muscle group more than twice a week, all the way up to four to six times a week. So that was a too long binge watch version of how to get jacked. But what about strength? How do we get stronger? Strength is specific. I'll assume you're powerlifting, but the following applies regardless of what exercise you want to get better at. Regarding exercise selection, with a few exceptions, most of the exercises we do should be very similar to the exercise we're trying to improve in. We want to train in a similar repetition range as the repetition range we're trying to get stronger at. Try to improve your one rep max. In that case, most of your training should take place around one to five reps, maybe all the way up to 10, but rarely above 10 reps. Getting sufficient rest between sets is even more important for strength than it is for hypertrophy. Getting more weight on the bar will directly cause more strength improvements. So making sure that you're sufficiently rested after each set before you go into that next set is actually quite important for strength gains. So for strength, we'll generally rest between two and eight minutes between sets. We typically want to do five to 15 sets per week per lift when training for strength. The reason for this is that as you do more volume or more sets per week, you do see greater strength gains, but doing more volume also causes greater fatigue, and this can interfere with lifting enough weight on the bar to get maximally stronger. So there's a trade-off there, but generally between five and 15 sets per week per lift will get you in the right ballpark. We generally want to avoid going to failure. As you go closer to failure, each set will become a lot more fatiguing, but there's actually no benefit to doing so from a strength gains perspective. However, when you're approaching a max out, you may want to go a bit heavier and a bit closer to failure in order to really practice grinding out a heavy lift. Conversely, when you're far from a max out and the emphasis is a bit more on gaining muscle to help out strength in the long term, that's when you may find that going closer to failure on your accessories is gonna help you with gaining muscle, as I mentioned earlier. As far as exercise selection goes, we want to focus on the muscles that directly contribute to the lifts that we care about. For powerlifters, this means for the bench, the chest, triceps, and shoulders. For the squat, the quads, adductors, and glutes. For the deadlift, the quads, hamstrings, glutes, adductors. Other muscle groups, like the back, the abs, the calves, the forearms, stuff like that, they don't directly contribute to strengthen those lifts. And by doing more work for them and selecting more exercises targeting those muscle groups, we cause additional fatigue, which takes away from how much training we can do for those muscle groups that actually matter for strength. Finally, more frequent practice is generally better for strength. But the more technical a lift is and the less fatiguing it is, the more consistently it should be trained for maximum strength improvements. For the deadlift, that generally means once to twice a week. For the squat, that generally means twice to four times a week. For the bench, that generally means three to five times a week. These figures include accessory work, like close variations, like the close grip bench for the competition bench press. So that's how you train for strength. You'll have noticed some key differences between training for hypertrophy and training for strength. Specifically, I think there are four differences worth paying attention to. Number one, how close to failure you train. Number two, how heavy you lift. Number three, what exercises you select. And finally, number four, 
how many sets you do per week. These four factors is where power building exists. You need to strike a compromise within these four factors. The two main factors influencing what compromise should be struck are number one, how important is aesthetics versus strength to you? And number two, what's your timeline? Are you maxing out soon? Or are you still quite far out from maxing out and caring about your strength? If you have no plans of maxing out soon, all else being equal, stick closer to the muscle growth guidelines. On the other hand, if you are maxing out very soon, all else being equal, stick very closely to the strength guidelines. If one goal, for example, aesthetics, is more important than the other to you, for example, strength, stick closer to the guidelines associated with aesthetics. I'll now give examples of how to apply this stuff, assuming that A, both strength and aesthetics are reasonably important to you, and B, that you're neither particularly close or particularly far away from max out. If one of these two things doesn't apply to you, make sure to adjust accordingly inching closer to the guidelines for strength or for hypertrophy. Finally, as a quick note, if you don't have one rep max goals, adjust the target rep range to correspond to whatever your target rep range is. If you want to get better at five rep maxes, stick mostly around five reps. How heavy should you lift? Well, for powerlifting muscles, mostly stick to sets of three to eight repetitions. You can also do singles on the competition lifts or the lifts that you really care about before doing that back off work between three and eight reps, but this isn't essential and maybe more beneficial as you get closer and closer to competition or to maxing out. For non-strength muscles, like for powerlifting, the back, the biceps, the abs, etc., mostly stick to doing sets of between five and 20 reps. How many sets should you do? Well, for strength muscles, like the chest, triceps, quads, etc., for a powerlifter, generally stick between 10 and 15 sets per week per muscle group or per lift. For other muscle groups, like the back, biceps, etc., these muscles can generally handle a slightly higher volume, so you also want to stick between 10 and 15 sets, typically for those muscle groups. What exercises should you pick? Well, for the strength muscles, like for a power of the, the chest, quads, adductors, you mostly want to select close variations and the actual exercise that you're trying to get stronger at. So bench variations, squatting variations, and deadlift variations will be the vast majority of your work for those muscle groups. In addition to close variations of the main lift and the main lift itself, you can also allocate up to 25 to 50% of your overall sets per week to non-specific variations, more so targeting certain areas of the muscle that may otherwise go untrained. For example, the rectus femoris doesn't really get trained very well during the squat, so doing something like a reverse Nordic curl can really complement your physique in terms of hypertrophy. Likewise, a leg curl can target the short head of the biceps femoris, which otherwise doesn't really get trained during power lifts or during close variations of the power lifts. For muscle groups that aren't involved in your strength lifts, you may want to focus mostly on exercises that lengthen the target muscle and challenge it heavily in that position. Specifically, you may also want to avoid exercises that involve the lower back too much, for example. So in selecting exercises for your back, which isn't really involved in the deadlift, in the squat, or in the bench, you may still want to avoid exercises that have you bend over a lot and recruit your lower back a lot and potentially fatigue it and interfere with your powerlifting or strength training. For power building, should you train to failure or not? Failure training or training very close to failure should be used very sparingly when it comes to muscle groups involved in the power lifts or in the lifts that you're trying to get stronger in. Generally, most of your training for those muscle groups should take place between two and five reps in reserve or RPEs of about five to eight. Two cases where you may want to go closer to failure than this is one, when further away from a competition, where the focus is mostly on gaining muscle and going closer to failure can help you gain muscle. Number two is when approaching a competition and you wanna practice the skill of maxing out and grinding out a heavy lift. In this case, going a bit closer to failure for your top sets of one to three reps can help you practice the skill and make sure you're prepared for when you're maxing out. For muscle groups that aren't involved in the main lifts that you're trying to get stronger in, you can go closer to failure, training on average between zero and three reps in reserve. I'm gonna give you a break from all the information now. This is all pretty complicated, and that's part of the art of program design. The good news is, I have put together 15 free programs that do all this for you. You can get these sent to you for free via email if you sign up to the email newsletter below in the description. Alternatively, if you want an expert to take care of all your training and nutrition for you, check out the wolfcoaching.com website and apply for coaching in the shop. Final note, I will actually be making a video very soon breaking down my own power building training split, so stay tuned for that. That's the video. If you liked the video, please comment, like, subscribe. I need to pay my bills. And I will see you guys in that next video. Peace. Let me uh, take off my pants, you feel me? Because uh, it is warm in here. Ugh. Off camera, you'll have to pay the additional OnlyFans fee to get access to the uh, below the belt line shot. Sorry. <laughs>